I'm Mark Unger, producer of Roundtable. Because we find this presentation so special, we really would like for you to see this. Please watch. First step to uh, many people who were this is something that we could really work on with that this is something that's going to really be the future mm. and uh, it still took a few years before things got to a point in which I feel comfortable actually operate computers everything that we do in photography uh, is a reflection of what exists in great museums. You know, they did not appreciate any of that and they said forget about it, this will never catch up. Uh, this is like profoundly wrong, blah 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 blah. Luckily I didn't pay too much attention. So there's room for absolutely every kind of photography and the range is so wide and uh, if I were not creating images the way I do, I would probably put them on a canvas. Welcome to a single shot show. Today we have a conversation with uh, one of uh, the most profound uh, artists uh, working in uh, general of surrealistic photography, Richard Horowitz. It's our own New York photographer, and actually he was kind enough to invite us to his studio to discuss the uh, relationship between reality and photography. Hello, Richard, and thank you for inviting us uh, to. The studio. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Art exists because it has a purpose, or art exists just because it exists, just because there was a reason for creating an art piece. What do you think is uh, well, art, art, art in my opinion has tremendous purpose, you know. Uh, it can be uplifting, it can be devastating, but it's definitely, you know, uh, part of our life. I, mean, I cannot imagine my life without referring to some of the masterpieces uh, of the past and also uh, some work that's being created right now that uh, have a tremendous impact on me. Many people believe that I have a right to do this just because it already does. But I personally do believe that if art is not making this world a better place, Listen, look, uh, art exists uh, for people who are sensitive enough to, you know, to seek it, to look for it. Uh, of course, not every human being uh, needs art or reacts to it or uh, refers to it or learns from it. Uh, gets uplifted by it. Uh, people like myself, I mean, I can't imagine is this without art. I mean, this is like transcends just painting, photography, I mean, it's music, literature, cinema, everything. I imagine the void that you would have not being able to experience it all and mm -hmm. learning from it. No, I personally don't doubt uh, the value of art for humanity, and I did, but uh, what I heard been said many times that if the art actually does more harm than good, it still should be there. I, my personal belief is there is nothing that makes this world a better place. Ultimately, nothing that has a concept of hope in it exists in a specific art piece. For me, this art piece doesn't have value. I'm not saying that for everybody it should be the same, but for me it's so evident that I never question it for myself. Yeah, I, I feel pretty much the same way. I, I, I have to react to what I, what I see. I have to be uh, uh, 
taking it by what I see. Uh, it may disturb me sometimes, it may light me, it may make me laugh or cry, but uh, I can't imagine uh, the emptiness of life you know, without, without art. Chapter and a half. What I always believe is there is nothing scarier than the a notion of ultimate and uh, unrivaled finality of hopelessness. No, mm -hmm. that's probably the scariest uh, feeling I can get from that person. That so that's you see that's why that's why you know I'm at the opposite. It's a, opposite spectrum. Uh, I don't dwell with horrors uh, of life. I'm aware of them, but why would I want to go to a museum to see horrific things that I can experience opening television or, or reading newspapers? So I, mean, I don't need any people to remind me, you know. I mean, it took a certain, you know, psychology, it takes a certain, you know, uh, person to create a new world or piece of news or any other phenomenon about art as a in this world. Most of the art media in one or other way have uh, a tendency of completion. Whether it's a static piece of art or even a movie or a song, it has the moment in which this piece of art has some kind of finale. This finale doesn't have to be a period, it could be a karma and continuation is expected, but it's not meant to be continued. If you watch the news and no matter how horrible of event you're experiencing, there is always this notion that tomorrow something will happen that will make this world better. It's just part of the process. When it comes to the finalized art piece, which already is completed, that's it. If it doesn't have hope in it at the moment when it was created, it will not appear from anywhere. It's just not embedded in this particular art piece. That's why, for me, the notion of not having it in uh, any art piece in any form or medium was so startling, I would say. Yeah, but you see, as we said before, you know, uh, what we do is interview different people by different people. One day you can sudden them, you make them cry, the other day you make them laugh or, or uh, and it's such a uh, different uh, interpretations of what I do. Uh, that uh, the idea of, you know, of creating something that's really uh, static, it's a little bit uh, to me. I don't like to create static images. I like to create images that would uh, in some way provoke people to think and uh, find their own story behind it. So uh, that's you know that's the way uh, that's the way I work and so uh, it's not necessarily the right approach for everybody. But I found it to be really, uh, what makes me think. Yeah, actually, probably the most logical approach, especially uh, if you're talking about creating walls in a way that never existed. By the way, the, when you create uh, those art pieces, you actually treat them as uh, a new universe in a way created, or it's just visual? Does it have any, uh, basically, does the action you put in the picture is confined to this picture and it's just the visual that you wanted to portray or it's a part of the larger universe you're trying to confine to this uh, frame? Well, it's my case is larger universe because there is definitely continuity in what I do, you know. Uh, the, and also it's interesting that uh, when you look at larger body of my work, and place next to, next to each other pictures done, you know, decades ago with what I do right now, uh, people frequently uh, lose their sense of time. They, they don't know uh, what was done when, mm -hmm. and they look at my analog pictures and they're absolutely convinced that they're digital. 
and vice versa, uh, proving that it's really irrelevant, you know, what technology we use, as long as the images uh, have, you know, uh, transcending value and, and there's nothing more uh, um, nice to me or, or uplifting to me uh, when people look at my pictures done uh, uh, 40, 50 years ago and they uh, consider them to be very contemporary. Oh, that they see they, 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 don't, they don't age because I mean, some things age very quickly, you know, they age sure. within an hour, others, you know, last for a long time. But I'm not here to say that I do it you know, consciously, you know, but this is the way, this is the way my mind works, uh, this is the way I visualize things. And uh, also the other thing that's, that's interesting that I was, uh, a few years ago I was working on my autobiography and people asked me, uh, do you keep a diary? And so I was just saying, no, no, but I have, you know, I have all my pictures, you see, I look to them and I recall with great clarity what happened at a particular time, you know, when they were done, how they were done, why they were done, you see, and they serve the same purpose as if I was putting anything in writing. So, uh, and, and also uh, people who follow my work uh, definitely sense the, the continuity, visual and conceptual continuity between, you know, between my images. Yeah. Well, the reason why uh, your images still remain relevant even uh, if it was quite a few years since the image was created, in my opinion, is because they are great with uh, the allegories and some uh, symbols of uh, eternal value. You know, yeah. basically create a story based on uh, what humanity believes of the object on this particular moment in our history attaching to this object because the latter is changing but the one truly stays eternal. Mm -hmm. Sun uh, mm -hmm. in northern culture will always mean life just as well as in uh, the south especially in uh, areas around the deserts it means death yeah. and that would be a difference uh, between the cultures but uh, if you talk about context of one particular geograph geographical area that pretty much is not changing and that's I believe why what uh, you create is very uh, relevant you are recognizing this, this deep eternal uh, meaning assigned to the objects and creating a story from them but uh, you mentioned that you actually mostly uh, creating this imagery based on just the feeling, the way you feel, but uh, you're not att attaching any conscious story when you're creating it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I do, you know, it varies, it varies because uh, uh, whatever I do, I hope to have some kind of purpose. Uh, I would like to, you know, uh, um, expose something or, or share something or simply get it off my chest, you know, is because uh, there is uh, a story behind it. There's need to do it. I mean, uh, I don't believe in things kind of uh, existing in the void, in the uh, absence so, of, of any, you know, any uh, uh, context. Um, but uh, again, I think uh, myself, uh, I learned to pay little attention to my own intentions, although they're very valid to me, they're valid when I create an image, but once I'm done with it, it uh, takes on its own life and makes people react according to their own conscience. Mm. Well, uh, at the very beginning of the conversation, we actually established that there is no border between commercial photography and art photography, but uh, what about the work that you're doing on assignment? Uh, that, as I understand, besides your own creative license, have to have some visual meaning attached to it that is directed by uh, the purpose for which it was commissioned. Yes, but you see, in my instance, it's been a little bit different, you know. Uh, People uh, who discover me, who wanted to work with me, were interested in my point of view. Obviously, I had to work in some kind of context of the this year, but uh, 
I would uh, concentrate on creating a mood and atmosphere uh, around an object or product or situation as opposed to actually just taking a picture of the product. Mm -hmm. So uh, I very rarely in the past work from strict layouts. Mm -hmm. it's, usually, it's usually based on a conversation with me and the uh, creative directors. And uh, frequently I would be left uh, pretty much alone. Of course, when you do something for somebody, uh, you have to be able to fulfill certain needs that this person you know, okay. expects and, you know, and pays you for. But you don't have to be that literal. See, when you say advertising doesn't mean a, a can of Coke or, or a bottle of, of, of liquor mm -hmm. or, or, a, or a perfume or a brooch or whatever. Uh, but I've done work for some of the greatest uh, corporations uh, in the world uh, that we used to promote them without actually showing the product. And if I show the product, it was shown in a totally extraordinary different way that you know that you would not expect. But uh, it will become memorable enough for people to sort to pay attention to it. But that's my way of you know of interpreting it and approaching it. Uh, I understand there are a lot of people who don't work this way, who are unable to work this way, who don't choose to work this way. But that's why I feel, you know, really uh, I'm quite positive about the stuff that I've done in advertising because right now, very frequently, people buy my advertising quote-unquote picture for their collections. They they don't they don't they don't look at them as advertising photographs because they they stand they stand on their own they stand on their own and that's that's the way it is. Well, when you look at uh, your works, sometimes it's really impossible without knowing precisely to tell uh, what was created for purely artistic purposes or what was commissioned commercially, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's why, you see, I was never ashamed of, of, of uh, working on assignment. I'm sometimes shocked and surprised and disappointed that some of my colleagues who are fantastic photographers uh, created sort of like a schizophrenic world that they do things for themselves and they do things for advertising. And usually the stuff they do for themselves is, is great, but the advertising stinks, or vice versa. Instead, but, and, and there are also some people, I'm not going to mention names, who, who through their entire career stay away uh, from being uh, uh, recognized as, as advertising photographers. They will not allow their name uh, the persona to be attached to the advertising work. No. And now they're considered to be great artists and people don't realize the truth. Not even men and is thinking not bad, <laughs> but it just shows you what goes on in one's head, how people have to sort of like cut this, you know, or draw this line between one and the other. It can't help to ask one question. Uh, mentioned this schizophrenic old where yes. a person on one hand creating something commercial and on the other hand uh, creating something artistically and don't let to mix one with the, to one to be mixed with another and uh, you somehow manage to create a situation when your artistic work is appreciated by commercial uh, assignment provider by the client uh, just and it makes me very curious uh, whether originally you was approached by those uh, clients or you actually created this situation when uh, you convinced them that this will work them because even up to this day uh, commercial photography tends to be very straightforward sometimes you see something abstract and something as you described going around the subject instead of directly addressing it but uh, on the other hand, uh, most of it is very direct, so it probably took huge leap of judgment from... Okay, well, let, me, let me explain to you the way, the way I, I, I have worked. Uh, I realized the situation, I realized what you just expressed. Frequently, I would go out of the way to create images as a proposal a suggestion to a potential client 
to show what I could bring in to a particular situation. So I create, create images on my own. I would go and see some art directors, I would have my agent see some art directors. And not always, but frequently, it stirred up their mind. Uh, so they would say, okay, I find it interesting, let's go this way. Or, 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 or I'll, give you, I'll give you another example that's very interesting how, how things you know, work in light that I totally observe and abstract. Uh, never had photographed cars in the past. I was yeah. never interested in photographing cars. One day I got a call from a creative director of one of the major advertising agencies asking me if I would be interested in doing a campaign of cars. So I was very intrigued. I went to see the guy and I said, you know, how come you know that I don't have any cars in my portfolio? He looked at me and said, you know, I've seen some pictures that you did, did of silver wire. And looking at that, I realized that you know how to control reflecting surfaces. If you know how to photograph a spoon, you know how to photograph a body on top. That's actually a true visionary who would be able to get this. Sometimes it would take visionary, you know, and, and, and he was right, he was very happy, it was a lot of hard work, I had to learn a lot of new things, but I approached lighting cars as if I were lighting a beautiful piece of jewelry, a piece of silver. Or, so, you know, so, 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 so many art directors, many people who gave me chance, had enough imagination, had enough understanding uh, to be willing to put up with me and to work with me. And also I should say that I was not a believer of really imposing anything upon other people, forcing anything, like my vision, you take it or leave it, you know. Mm -hmm. I like to negotiate, uh, sometimes you have to go uh, for compromise, there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody in art history, all great painters, sculptures, you know, they had to deal with popes, you know, and rich people who were paying their bills and they had to listen to what they had to say. And sometimes they complied, sometimes they didn't. But we're all, by nature of the beast, exposed to uh, being forced to react somebody else's opinion and we have to be able to uh, fight for their own, we have to be able to compromise, we have to be able to change. It's part of life, that's the way it is. Indeed. And we decided to go in this direction basically, against the flow in a uh, most direct and conceivable way. Well listen, uh, what I've been doing is not really very original and new, you know, I I'm a great believer in learning from the past and uh, I studied uh, art history and photography and I learned uh, that uh, right from the beginning, from the end of photography, there were people who were uh, doing more than just capturing soccer ahead. Uh, so uh, there were photographers, so called photographers of ghosts. Uh, there are people taking advantage of the fact that uh, photography was so new and the idea of capturing part of reality was so unusual that uh, even when those images were altered, uh, people still tend to believe in all this. Uh, yes, and, you know, and the idea that photography uh, is being used just to uh, record reality uh, it's just part of the story. I'm looking at the pictures from the Civil War, which is Brady, who uh, is considered to be like one of the greatest uh, recorder of the, the actual events taking place at the time. We found out later on that he was altering, restaging some situations that he was not capturing in an instant. Consider them to be video, such a great historical value. Oh, what can I say? I guess uh, every artist who is trying to create something in the direction of 
surrealism at this day holds something to you personally, Richard? Because you actually managed to pull off something that even when you describe it right now sounds impossible. You actually managed to get people to look at something in a completely different way. Way, the way that they never was quite impossible, but you see that if you look at this way, you will never make a step forward. You know, if you feel you have a wall in front of you and you're afraid to move forward, it's very little you can do with your life. You have to be able to uh, deliver, you have to be able to sort of uh, do things that will be uh, applicable and acceptable to others if you work for hire. If you work on your own, of course, you let your mind fly, you do anything you want to. But there is you no know, connection between these two. You can, you can, you can be uh, 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 you know, true to yourself, at the same time uh, furnish what others need, what others want to pay for or what others want to collect, what others want to live with. As long as what you do is not boring, there's nothing worse in life than creating <laughs> more boredom, you know. Well, if I get bored with my own work, I throw it to a basket, you know. I don't want to get bored, I want to be excited all the time. Well, that's actually an excellent point to conclude our conversation, indeed. There is a lot you can debate or not, but there is one understandable thing. If it's boring, it's dead. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rashad. This was the most beautiful conversation. found that worth watching as much as I did. I'm Mark Unger for Roundtable. Thanks for watching.